Welcome back, my friends, to another episode of Tales from the Road. And today my food adventures bring me to Tunis, North Africa. Tunisia is a country at the crossroads of the Maghreb, known for its legendary food culture and diverse dishes. To discover this mix of East meets West, I'm joined by my buddy Chedley, a local foodie and videographer with a passion for the good stuff. So, as they say in Tunis, yalla, let's get it. and we are gonna try some food. I've got my Tunisian friend here, Shedley, Hello. my guy. So he's gonna, he's got the plan. Well, we don't really have a plan. We're gonna just try some stuff and explore. So let's eat some food. Let's try. <laughs> Our first stop is a small shop specializing in fried items in Tunis's ancient Medina. They keep it simple, only selling a couple staple bites to the blurred masses. We're here to try a Tunisian dish called fricassee, a stuffed bread item that's typically eaten for breakfast. So our first location is this fry guy, and what they've got here is a huge pot of oil, and they're making two Tunisian things that are really popular here. One is called fricasse, which we will try, and the other one is called the brik, brika. Which, brika. Yeah. Brika. brika. Okay. Which is this thing? Typically, it's stuffed with eggs, tuna, and then it's fried in sort of like a dumpling shape. Really, really good. You can find these all over Tunisia. It's like the go-to starter. But we're going for the fricasse. Street food number one, the fricasse. It's a piece of fried bread stuffed with tuna, a little bit of eggs, olives with the pits in, so you gotta be careful, and a little bit of harissa, which is spicy Tunisian chili paste. Saha, that's cheers in Tunisian. Nice. The outside, nice and crispy, but chewy. Kind of like uh, the bambaluni that we tried in the last Tunisia episode. You got a little bit of the the meats, the egg, and the harissa. It's like, it's like a mini fried sandwich, and I dig it. Let's see what we got next. Our next stop takes us to a very famous street food stall in the central Medina, specializing in Tunisian chapati. A quick rise dough is stuffed with egg, cheese, and then whatever fillings you want. Rolled in half like a calzone, and then put on a ripping hot clay pot over real charcoal. For me, it's always the story of the people that make these dishes, the true masters of street food the speed and precision of making thousands of these per day. It's just incredible to watch. So we call this uh, chapati mandaya, and uh, right now we, we will try it. Oh my God. What do you Super think? Good. Super good. The surprising thing about this is you have a nice contrast of textures. You have the crispy outside, little char, but it's not burnt. It looks burnt, but it's not. And the inside is really creamy, and like the, the, everything kind of blends together. Super delicious. Very impressed. Next up, it was time to hop on Chedley's motorbike and cruise around the ancient streets. You can really feel the age of the city this way and Chedley was a true master of the road as he easily winded his way through cars, alleys, and other bikes. As we were driving, we saw a man pushing a cart and I knew we had to stop. This dish here is called harissa, a semolina flour cake made with brown sugar and almonds. As street food like this in Tunisia is technically illegal, Chedley took the place of the local who didn't want to be on camera. So right now we've got the harissa. It's very confusing because harissa is the notorious chili paste of Tunisia, but We've got harissa, which is also like a cake. So here it is. It seems like it's got nuts. It's maybe some sort of flour. The uh, guy didn't want us filming him because uh, all street food here is illegal unless you pay the police and then you can sell it. So let's give it a try. The sacha. Oh my God. I've never had anything like that before in my life. Is it couscous? Meat? Smid, smid. Smid. Yeah. I really don't know the word in oh, English. Oh, interesting. This thing's super cool. It's got like almost a couscous-like texture, little pearls. It's cooked on the bottom and the top, and then simple syrup. I've never had anything like that, Nyla. I really dig it. Hopping back on the motorbike for the next food, I can't explain how sketchy this ride was. Reminded me of my times cruising Southeast Asia. 
Next on the list was a popular breakfast item called dra, a porridge made from sorghum flour. They top it up with a heaping spoonful of sugar, nuts, golden raisins, and then a piece of harissa that we tried before. Chetli uses this double spoon mixing technique for equal distribution, a Tunisian know-how. Grab a spoon and dig in. First Tunisian dra. Yeah. Sorghum, nuts, all kind of good stuff. Let's try it. Looks like Tunisian oatmeal. Strong nut flavor. I think the raisins are really nice in there. It gives a little brightness and sweetness. And uh, the porridge, it's not too, uh, not too strong flavored. It goes nicely with all of the fixins. And I think the harissa that we had earlier yeah. gives it a little sweetness, so it's a nice one. It's good with draw. It's good with draw. On the other side of the stand, a friendly lady was also making the national street food of Tunisia, mulewi, a flatbread often eaten with honey. A beautiful thing, and easily one of my favorite things to eat in the country. At about this time, Chelly and I were getting pretty full, but he wanted to take me for what many call the national dish of Tunisia, leblebi. And, of course, he knew just the place. Tucked across from an adjacent mosque, this place serves one thing and one thing only. Leblebi is a simple dish of a rich beef broth and chickpeas, topped with good olive oil and a hefty amount of harissa chili paste, and of course, bread to taste. Leblebi is a national treasure of Tunisia, one of the most common dishes that you'll find here, and it's quite the process. So, we're going to watch Shedli do Leblebi the Tunisian way. Ooh. So first you smash the bread. You yeah. take bread from like a big bucket, you grab an empty bowl, and you smash away. Or rip, and or whatever. And you can take uh, every... Uh, any piece, any, any piece, piece you yes. want, any piece you want. Yeah, it's just a big open bowl. Yeah. We're following Shedley into the shop. Let's go. Let's go. Yalla, yalla. Okay. <laughs> Gonna watch the master mix the leblebi. Yeah. Is this a morning dish or anytime? No. Anytime. Here in Tunisia, we we do it anytime. Anytime. Okay. Look at that. Okay. When I had this, I didn't mix it so much. So you gotta mix it. Okay. That's incredible. All right. Little vinegar on the top. Beautiful. Misaha, give it a try. Shedley says that this is the best Leb Lebi in Tunisia, and we're gonna test it out right now. Misaha. This is perfect. The bread kind of just eats up the sauce and it becomes sort of a nice texture that you have the chickpeas kind of smooth, but the bread very soft. It's salty, it's spicy, the vinegar a little bit sour. This might be the best bite of food I've had in Tunisia. All right, so from the bike, I wanna say thank you guys for watching. We wanna thank Chedley for giving us an excellent tour. Absolute legend, what a good friend, local guy, there he is. We're not gonna crash this bike. If you want to come to Tunis and eat street food, you got to go to the local parks. That's super important, and that's what we did today. Thank you guys for watching, and see you in the next one. Assalamu alaikum.